What's up guys? My name is Cody and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be breaking down my top five plays from the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive playbook in Madden 17. And the reason we're doing this is because I think that these plays will transfer to Madden 18 with the exception of one play. Uh, but however, I really do think that this playbook is going to be the best playbook in Madden 18 as well. If you guys uh, think otherwise, then let me know what playbook you would recommend me run for Madden 18. All right, so the first play that we're going to look at is the ace pair flex, and we're going to look at the play power O. Now, I only really like to use the ace pair flex inside the 10-yard line. I don't, I don't really use it much out of there, but inside the 10-yard line, I find this to be a very valuable formation. So, um, and we'll, we'll show you even closer. We'll go to about the 5-yard line just to kind of show what a, a, a true goal line scenario is. So the power O, the reason I like it is because you can run it against pretty much every defense, That right, with that being the exception right there, if they're in crazy goal line. But um, even then, normally you can get a yard or two. Um, the reason I like this is because it takes a very specific defense to stop it. Just so happens the computer was in it the last two plays. It's, it's, it's basically to stop this running play. It's heavy, heavy goal line and you have to blitz everybody in man coverage. And the reason that I find that to be effective and helpful to me is because the next play that I'm going to call to show you does a good job at beating that as well. But in my opinion, I just find this effective. Um, it, it will, trust me, it does work better in game than in practice mode. Um, for whatever reason, it's very difficult to run the ball in practice mode in my experience. But anywho, you just kind of want to guide him and follow your lead blockers. I don't recommend sprinting until you're through the hole. So until you're through the running lane, don't sprint. Once you get through, then by all means, do whatever you want. But uh, again, this is just something I like to use on the goal line. This is, again, I think this is just one of the better plays in the game. It's very difficult to stop. And you can combine it with the halfback slam, um, which is the run audible down and, and run a different direction entirely. It changes if when you run different directions, it requires different defenses to stop it. So uh, use that halfback slam as well um, when you want to attack the middle of the field. The fourth play um, on our list here, the, the number four on our list, is the play wide receiver under. And with this play, what we're going to do is we're going to put Des Bryant on a smart route. We're going to smart route Jason Witten. We're going to zig route uh, Swam here. And then we're going to take... Terrence Williams, we have a couple of different options we can do with him. I, th But I have found the slant route, the motion out slant route to be most effective. So the first read on this is to throw it to Des Bryant. Now, if they're in zone, that doesn't work. So I was right there. They're in zone. Okay, that doesn't work. But if they're in in man-to-man -man coverage, you'll find that to be a very effective route. And that's why it's the first read. If Des Bryant's covered, normally Ezekiel Elliott will be open on that little pass right there. You do need to kind of look out for a user player because sometimes – they will, you know, kind of expect this play, and they'll try to use her, uh, defend it to guard against it. Uh, let's see here. There's there's that route to Des Bryant, kind of how you can use it. You want to high point, pass it, and you want to angle it at about 9 o'clock on your left analog stick. So if your left analog stick was a clock, you want to hold your hand at 9 o'clock on that joystick. So here is the man-to-man, -man. and as you can see, that's actually very rare. No, I've never really seen that animation before. Normally, it's just not even a no-brainer. He's gonna, he is going to dominate man-to-man -man, uh, from that coverage shell. But then you have Zeke, and then the last route that I really throw. The other two routes are kind of more bait routes. I don't really use them, to be honest with you, uh, just because I never really get to their progressions. But the third route on this play that you want to look for is uh, Jason Witten. And basically, what you want to do is the same pass lead you did for Des Bryant. You want to do for Jason Witten. Um, and you want to kind of wait until he gets really deep into the end zone. The the core concept here, guys, is the deeper they get in the end zone, the better for your attack. So the, the more you can let them get kind of deep into the corners, that's where you want to attack because most zones don't cover that, especially in the red zone. Most man coverages by that point have lost. Like right here, I'm going to throw it way in the back of the end zone. It kind of works like a fade route to Des. So... You know, this I can talk about this play for, for hours, but just suffice it to say, high point pass at nine o'clock for the corner route or the post route for Ezekiel Elliott, you don't hide, you don't you don't do any pass lead, any high point whatsoever. You just throw the ball, uh, just kind of like a snap throw, and it's just kind of right there, just a quick little pass. Okay, so that's 
pretty much what I will utilize from that. The, the slant route and the zig, again, you know, I can show them to you. They're not going to be completed at a high percentage. They are like last case, you know, worst case scenario with this, I can throw a high point up to Terrence and just kind of pray. Um, the swam route, the reason he's on that zig route is to pull the zone down so that Jason Witten is open in the back of the end zone. Okay, so that's pretty much that play. I wanted to move on to the to the next one. So the third one on the list here is the play verticals, and it comes to us from the gun bunch. In my opinion, guys, if you use these five plays together, you don't need any other plays to be successful in this game. Okay, let me repeat that. If you use these five plays together, you do not need any other play uh, in the game. All right, so verticals is the way we set it up. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you could do it. What I like to do the best is to put Jason Witten on a, sh a fade route, to put Ezekiel Elliott on an in route, and then I personally like to either leave Des Bryant on his route or I kind of re-hot route him to a fade. The next thing you need to do is you need to motion Cole Beasley out to the left side. Your first read is to Jason Witten, and then you're going to look to Cole Beasley. You want to snap the ball. As soon as Cole Beasley starts to set his feet, you snap it. You look to Jason Witten. Normally, he's not going to be open, but Cole Beasley will be open probably about 80% of the time. That's where you're going to go with the ball um, because most people are, uh, with combination of the other plays we're going to be running, they're going to be running more cover three style defenses, and that route right there demolishes, I, I repeat, demolishes cover three. You cannot run cover three against it. Cover three will get destroyed. Uh, as you'll see here, he ran cover three again. And I just, all I do with the pass lead is I normally pass it up and to the left. So if, if again, if that left analog stick was a clock, then you're going to be throwing that pass at about, oh, about 11 o'clock uh, as a pass lead. When they go man to man, you really have, uh, if it's a cover two man, there's no option outside of Ezekiel Elliott that I find to be very effective. The only other potential even route is the one to Terrence Williams, and I don't find that to work very well. So here you'll see he'll go man-to-man. -man. I'll lob it up. You know, you're just going to kind of throw it to Terrence Williams. As you see right there, I get intercepted. So, again, this is not a play you want to run against man-to-man, -man, but I find it so critical to this playbook and so good against cover three that I had to put it in here because it, it literally, guys, if they if they back off at all, this, this route is just – it just demolishes people. Another thing you could do if you wanted to be better against man is to put Ezekiel Elliott on a option route. The only problem with that is it doesn't do very good against cover two at that point. It makes this play a little bit more susceptible to vulnerability against the cover two. But that's what I would recommend with the verticals play. All right, so the this number two play on our list, and this is the play that I, I think is probably not going to work as effectively next year, at least from the bunch, is the shotgun Z spot. So most of us know about this play by now, but basically what I do on my hot routes, I put Ezekiel Elliott on a wheel route, I put Jason Witten on an in route, I put Cole Beasley on a slant, and I put Terrence Williams on a smart routed corner route. So this is kind of what it looks like. And then what I'll do is um, I will motion Cole Beasley to the left and snap it just like I would with verticals. Your first read is Jason Witten, and then you have Cole Beasley. And then you want to, once you look to those two, then you want to look to Terrence Williams. And then by that point, if, if, if you look to those couple of receivers, so you look to Witten, no. You look to Cole Beasley, no. You look to Terrence Williams in this situation. Uh, well, I didn't make a good pass lead, but probably could have hit, probably could have fit that in. But anyways, once you look to those three guys on the left side, then you want to look to Des Bryant, and then if Des Bryant is covered, normally that means Ezekiel Elliott is open. Des Bryant normally is not going to be covered. Um, and also the other thing with this route, the, the beauty of this play is that if you throw the, if your pass lead to Des Bryant, if that is up, like or not up, but um, if you have a high point pass to Des Bryant, it's not going to get intercepted. Now normally it won't get caught all the time because I just like to bullet pass and and throw it at about 10 o'clock with a 10 o'clock pass, pass trajectory, but um, but anyways. And then if Des Bryant isn't open, like I said, if you look to Zeke in there, it was just a bad example because they're running goal line. I could have just hit the slant. They're going to do it again, so I'm just going to throw a – yeah, the goal line defense is very frustrating. You want to do it in practice mode. But anyway, if, if they were to – you know, say we went through all these trajectories, 
nothing, 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 nothing. Uh, eventually, Zeke uh, is going to have a nice matchup against potentially a linebacker or something. Normally, if they've covered everything, then that means they're in some type of cover two zone hybrid. Uh, and what will happen is Zeke Elliott will be uh, will be a lot more open. Normally, you're going to hit you know one of the guys on the left side. Cole Beasley's route is really good against man to man, which makes it a very good complement with the verticals play. Okay, so the last play is actually in our quick audibles, and that's PA post. Uh, I've loved this play for years. I truly believe this is the best play in 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 the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook because of the simplicity of which it, it allows you to be effective. So basically what you want to do with this play is you want to create a high-low read on the left side, and then you want to create a curl, curl flat read on the right side. So you want to put Zeke Elliott on a out route. You want to put Jason Witten on a, a fade. And then if you want to, the only downside to Ezekiel Elliott being on this out route and, and with all the other motion stuff we did is it does actually weaken this play, but you want to keep it consistent. So you're just going to take Cole Beasley to the outside, and I like to put him on an in route, and I'm actually going to snap the ball right as soon as I start motioning him just because they're going to actually play it like normal because he's on the same first motion. But, you know, it's just an immediate snap. Now, if you wanted to play around with it, you actually can motion him out and, and then let him set up completely and then go. Um, but in my opinion, I just find that it, the, the flow of the play actually works a little bit better if you um, if you just you know snap it right as soon as he goes uh, to the outside. So it takes a step and then snap it, and you'll find this to just it just creates a lot of, of better timing. And I find this play to be the best counter play to the Z spot. I just find they work really, really well in conjunction. And I'm looking forward to see what they do with the bunch next year just to kind of see, uh, you know, what their plan is for the replacement of Z-Spot with a post round on the right side, if they're just going to use a regular post or, or what they're going to do going forward. But anyways, guys, those are the top five. Um, those are the top five plays from the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook. So I hope you guys uh, were able to learn something. Let me know what your favorite play from – the, the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook is. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to say Z-Spot, but try to, if, it, if it is Z-Spot, try to pick a different play that you can actually use in Madden NFL 18 to be effective. So anyways, guys, wanted to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. And if you enjoyed the video, um, then do yourself a favor and subscribe to our channel. That way you can have access to all of our content, including our Madden 18 guides that will be coming out.